The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome along to DBA Fundamentals Down Under for the first session of October. My name is Warwick Rudd, and I'll be your host once again for this session. In today's session, we've got John Miner talking to us about controlling chaos with resource government. I will hand over to John very shortly, but before I do, I do have some housekeeping rules, um, or not rules, but just some housekeeping for everybody. This session is being recorded and will be made available on the DBA Fundamentals website uh, after the, uh, the session has finished. So in a couple of days time, you should be able to come back and rewatch this video at any point in time. I will also be monitoring the session for any questions. So feel free to uh, punch any questions throughout the session uh, using the questions tab that you've all got access to. Now, before we go, just need to uh, big shout out to our sponsors. Without our sponsors, it makes it very difficult for us to put on these sessions for everybody. So a big shout out to Century One, our first sponsor. If you haven't already been along to Century One, make sure you do. They have some fantastic materials that are able to download and use in your regular day-to-day -day activity as a data professional. Our second sponsor, DB Watch, just like Century One, also has some fantastic materials that you're able to download, learn, and improve on uh, your overall general knowledge, uh, as well as how you're able to uh, perform doing your day-to-day -day activities. You may not be aware, but there's still time um, to register, and the link is down the bottom, aka.ms forward slash Azure SQL Digital Event. You can sign up for that uh, uh, this session and here's from uh, Microsoft Principal Architect Bob Ward talking to us about the um, uh, Azure SQL. So with this being, well, two days time, make sure that uh, you register for this free event. Just like this uh, uh, virtual chapter, PASS has many other virtual chapters available for you to register and join so that you can continue and broaden your experience as a data platform professional. With that, I'll hand over to John and we'll get uh, this session running. Excellent. So uh, share my screen just for the start of it. It's uh, 1030 in United States. I'm in uh, New England. And today we're going to be talking about resource governance. So I'm going to hopefully if I can learn how to do this, turn off my video. It's starting to get chilly over here. So I got my little stove in the back going on. And I got my share screen and work. You see the first uh, page of the resource governor? Uh, of your slide, yes, your opening slide. Excellent, excellent. I'll slide this aside. So resource governor is a really uh, <clears throat> short talk, but it's a very well, important one, okay? John, yep. we're currently looking at, your, the, at the presenter view. Yep, so let me try doing that. I always have fun with this. So display settings. That's yeah, this one, maybe. Mm -hmm. You might need to swap your screen around. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I always forget how to do this. Once I get a reading view, slide, normal, display settings, is that where you go? Um. No, that's not it. And this is the slideshow. Okay. Right. Does this look good? We're still seeing the presenter's view. Um... Okay. Yeah, hang on a second. It might be up top. I apologize, everyone, for doing this. It's always the very first one. Change presenter, show screen. I can say, this is showing my whole screen, right? And then this the view down the bottom, there's only display settings. It says optimize for notes. And then there's this view, let's say, we don't want that one, we don't want that one. Is that better or? There we go. Awesome. 
So it's the third to the last one, I'll remember that. <clears throat> so sorry again. <clears throat> so my name again is John Miner. Um, I'm a data platform architect. I work for a company called Insight Digital Innovations. Um, I apologize, I haven't updated this uh, <clears throat> presentation in a while. It's a, like I said, it's a very quick presentation, but it's very fundamental, okay? Um, Blue Metal was the company I joined three years ago. They were bought out by uh, uh, Insight Digital Innovations, and I'm a full-time uh, Azure technologist, so I do a lot of time in Azure. Okay, and that's where I spend most of my time during the day, you know, with Databricks, um, Azure SQL, like Bob Wood's going to talk about. There's a lot of flavors out there. Microsoft's uh, pushing Azure Synapse recently, which is an interesting beast. I call it the three-head monster, but uh, because you got Spark, you got an MPP, and you got SQL on demand, so it's almost like Polybase. But uh, definitely uh, pop into Bob's session. I just want to promote him. I saw him in 2012 at Pass, and he's an excellent speaker, and he knows his stuff. He's the only guy I ever know that uh, opens up the Windows debugger and looks at SQL Server EXE running. A uh, couple things. I've been part of Pass for the last 10 years, and if you're not part of Pass, please join. Um, you know, help my career um, immensely. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is certifications. <clears throat> I have um, have been certified, like works a, a certified master in SQL. I have hold a bunch of different MCSE certifications over the years. Uh, I think that, you know, with technology changing, it's always uh, good to keep up. I do have a couple blogs. Uh, one is MS SQL Tips, and I'm slowly approaching my 75th article. So um, if you like what I have to say tonight, uh, please pop in. I write mostly about Azure. Uh, but uh, again, you know, SQL does play a part even uh, in Azure, okay? And last but not least, you can see uh, I'm on Twitter, but not as much as I used to be. So let's see if we can go to the next slide. Okay, click next. There we go. Did I go too far? Nope, page two. So topics I'm going to talk about tonight are the following. Why use the use resource governor, okay? Um, the main thing is is that you want to tr control that chaos, right? You have, say, a uh, reporting application, and you have, say, an integration uh, service on the same um, SQL box, right? You don't want them to suddenly take over that whole machine and have no reports going, or you don't want ETL process to stall, right? So Resource Governor will allow you to actually partition up um, the resources and make sure that uh, those processes uh, still work, okay? Uh, we're going to talk about the architectural overview, how, um, <clears throat> you know, Microsoft came up with the resource governor. We're going to talk about uh, pools, and a pool is basically, uh, you know, associated with uh, the actual hardware. <clears throat> so you can set up a pool, and it'll, you can say how much CPU, memory, <clears throat> as well as disk speed you want to give out. We'll also talk about a work group. So work group is a... Uh, group in which you sign people to. And given that work group, okay, once you sign it, a person to that, uh, it dictates how much resources they can use, okay? And uh, how does that work? Well, it's a classification function. So when you log on to uh, a session, a SPID, right, first thing it's going to do is going to say, who are you? It's going to run this classification uh, function, and it's going to put you in the right uh, work group. And last but not least, we're going to talk about monitoring work groups, okay? Um, you know, we're going to um, do some uh, examples of perf uh, Perfmon, and we're going to pull up the Perfmon counters, and we'll do something like DBCC, which is kind of, uh, you know, heavy when it comes to uh, performance, and we can actually see what's going on uh, with the performance. <clears throat> so again, why use the resource governor? Uh, when you have a server that's a, um, you know, say you have two or three different database applications on there, okay, uh, you basically want to limit the impact of CPU bounded queries, okay? So you don't want to have a uh, query that is extremely uh, resource intensive and it take over your environment so that no one else can do work. You can also reduce the memory f uh, footprint of runaway queries. So this is one of the things you can actually put, you know, how much CPU I want a particular work group to have, 
or resource pool and how much memory I want. And we can also manage the I.O. So I can tell it how many IOPS if I wanted, which is kind of interesting because we're going to do an example in which I think I set an upper bound of like 1,500 and I have a uh, solid state drive. Solid state drives are pretty uh, performant. They usually get at least uh, 6,000 IOPS. And I think last time I looked at this, that's pretty typical. Uh, I'm in Azure today, so it might be a lot less, but still, uh, I've throttled it down to 1500 as well as 500, and we can see how that, uh, you know, impacts the performance of what we're trying to do. The main thing is, is that, remember, this is a multi-tenant environment, and you want to give precedence to applications that you think important. So, for instance, if reporting is the most important application on that box, we want to give more resources to the reporting application and, you know, uh, plan accordingly if we're running ETL. So this is the architectural overview of <coughs> Resource Governor. So when you log in, you have a SPID, which is a session ID, okay? And it could be one event because uh, SQL um, Server Management Studio, if you notice when it actually connects, okay, it has multiple spits, okay? And what happens is it automatically has a user-defined function. Now, you may have one defined. If you don't and resource group, um, you know, resource governor is not enabled, then there's two pools that are automatic. There's a default pool and there's an internal pool, okay? In this example, we can see that we have uh, several different groups defined, okay, as well as um, pools. So we can see that we have group one with pool one. We have the default internal, right? And default means that if you log in as a person and you don't meet the classification, then you'll be thrown in the default group as a default. If you do meet the classification, say I had a mapping function that said, hey, put John in group three, then his application two could be in group three and it's using pool two. And it's kind of weird how they did this because, you know, I probably would have put group one way down the end, so it would have been one, two, three, matching the pools in the groups, but they didn't. Um, so the overall process, what do we need to do to get this working? First, we need to enable the resource governor, okay? Second thing is we need to create a resource pool, okay? Third thing is we need to create a work group. Okay, fourth thing is we need a classification. Okay, uh, fifth thing is we need to register the classification function and then we have to restart the resource governor for it to take effect, okay? So that is pretty much, a, you know, the scripture of how to set up resource governor. So we can use either SSMS or T-SQL, okay? So we could do, first is we can say alter resource, resource governor, okay? And it's in master, that's where you need to run this. And you can say reconfigure and go. Or you can go to resource governor in object explorer and actually enable it. So at this point, I'm gonna minimize uh, the PowerPoint. I'm actually running in Azure. So if you take a look, I have a virtual machine. It's running right now, okay? And if we're interested, we can actually take a quick look at the resources. So I'm actually popping in here. We can see that there's four virtual CPUs and uh, 14 gigs of memory, okay? So I'm gonna minimize this and I'm gonna go to remote desktop protocol, okay? And so I was playing around with this, so I'm gonna minimize this one also, but this is performance monitor. We're gonna use that in the future. So the first thing is we want to see what's the state of the resource governor. How can we know that? Well, there's two ways. We can go down in SSMS. And of course, one of the things I talked about is, you know, application have more than one session, right? And if we go ahead and do SP underscore who to, right? And everyone knows this command. We can see that actually there's probably going to be multiple connections out here for uh, my logon because you, it's just the way it works, right? You know, um, each one of these dialogues opens up a actual connection. We can see that uh, this particular session, which only have a few windows, we have 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like different threads going on. Okay. So, um, you know, again, if you might have more than one session from your application hitting a database and you want them to all to hit the same pull, right? That's what the, the point of this is, is to actually uh, segregate the usage of um, the resources, right? So maybe one pool I want to give it more resources, another pool I give it less resources. So I'm going to use T-SQL to figure out what the state of the resource governor is, and we can see right now that A, there's no classification function, and it's not enabled, okay? And if they made some new changes, I'm using actual, uh, says VM for MS SQL, uh, says SQL 19. If we did, um, what, select ver? version there we go and we execute we can see this is actually uh, RTM it's an older version I haven't updated it since I put it and it's a developer so I'm actually using it for free because you know a developer you don't have to pay for okay so I'm gonna close this window again and we can see that it hasn't been configured so what we're gonna do now is going to alter and configure the resource group uh, uh, resource governor again and we're going to select from this and we can see now it's enabled right and if we want to disable it we didn't want to do it anymore we do this and we execute and we can see it's not enabled so i'm going to leave it enabled okay and we're going to go back to our slide deck so first step is enabling the resource governor okay we talked about disabling the resource governor it's just the opposite right so we can right click on it too and, and uh, disable it, or we can do alter resource governor, disable as a T-SQL command. So what is a resource pool? We saw there's a relationship between resource pools and um, work groups. The default pool accepts all unclassified sessions, and the internal pool is used by the engine, okay? So if you have something that's like, um, I don't know, the ghost cleanup job. It's one of those jobs that goes through and actually deallocates pages and puts them back into uh, the page um, use. You can see that that job would run on the internal pool, okay? The default pool would be like, hey, I don't have a classification set up yet, so I'll fall into the default pool, okay? So let's go back to, oops, hit the wrong button. I was thinking I was local, and I'm not local tonight. Yeah, one of the things they did at work is they changed the policies where I work, and uh, it makes it a little difficult to do some things when IT takes away some rights, such as starting SQL Server up. So I'm looking for the fifth one. Did I leave it up? Maybe I didn't. I'll find it. So at the bottom, we can see that there's a little thing that just shows log on. So if we're just curious, right, we can take a look at this and we can see that these are the non um, SA logons. We can see that there's one that's going to the internal uh, 163, it's the session ID. We can see that there's a uh, SQL Server agent is running under the default pool. And I actually have four threads open, okay? One, two, three, four, going for each of the windows, okay? So we can see that uh, if we looked at sys.dm exec sessions and joined it to the resource governor workload uh, groups and looked at session IDs greater than 60, we could see this here, okay? So we definitely are, we can see that we're using internal and default pools right now. Let's cancel this. Oops. So one of the things that's interesting is that um, in 2016, um, Microsoft introduced the uh, idea of using R, okay, to do in-place uh, machine learning with SQL Server. And in 2017, they added Python, and in 2019, they added R. There is an additional resource called the external resource pool, okay? And that is allocated from that resource pool, okay? There are some limitations with anything, right? And one of the first ones is it can only be 64 user-defined pools per server instance, okay? And um, 
when you have a pool, you can, resources can be limited at the pool level. So that's where you tell it, hey, I want only 30% of the CPU at most, zero to 30. Uh, say I want to have, uh, that's, you know, your CPU usage. You could also tell it memory, percentage of memory. So we know it's 14 gig on this uh, server. So if we did 50%, it would be seven gig, less or minus, you know, what the operating system is and what was given the SQL. And uh, we could also give it IOPS, right? So work groups. Work groups act as a container for sessions and each work group is assigned to one and only one pool, okay? A pool can have multiple work groups. So I could have work group A and work group B. People could be logged into the classify function to a certain work group, but they could point to the same pool. Work groups can also be moved or dropped. Uh, before that happens, all sessions have to be completed before the action takes place. And uh, work groups can be used to monitor that aggregate resource usage, okay? So we'll get into that next. So I wrote an article, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago, maybe a year ago, somewhere in that area. And it was about, um, I did a spoof on, you know, the bad doctors in history, like Dr. Kevorkian and, uh, you know, the German scientist Mengel and so on. And I had a hospital, okay, a fictitious hospital. So we're going to go with that today. It's, it's uh, not meaning anything. It's just, you know, I need some data. And what I did is this, as we'll go through it, is that I created, um, where's the two? I switched over to wrong tab. Let's see if I can find it. You, I'll open it up. It's this one. Okay, so this is where I was. One of the things I always do is I, you know, you can create databases wherever you want. And this is, again, this is not in the cloud, so you can specify where you want to put the database. So I can say if exist, and there's a new syntax now, drop database if exists. This was done uh, in 2017. So I didn't do that syntax, maybe 2016. And you can also put the primary in the log database somewhere, right? So I'm actually putting that, if we go on the C drive and we take a look at MS SQL tips, we can see, or MS SQL, we can see that there's a hospital uh, database here. And if we go back up one, we can see there's a log database, okay? One of the things I always like doing is switching the owner to uh, system admin, because you know, what happens is, is that, if you don't do that, the ownership, okay, of the database is automatically defaulted to who instantiated it, okay? So if we go to general files, we can see that's owned by SA, but if I didn't do that, it'd be created by John Minor, okay, J Minor. And we can see we created some schemas, which we have these two schemas, right? And then what I did is I created two tables and I just did some, here's some values I wanna insert into. So um, this is a derived table with uh, values, here it is, and it's my ID, my value. Um, these are basically baby names for girl names, and I put some baby names for boy names, so it's 50 different names. Then I did 50 last names that are popular in America. And then basically, you know, I could have done is I could have done a tally table here, but I was uh, lazy. Uh, I wasn't doing that many, I was only doing 100,000, not a million. And what I'm gonna do is randomly just create some patients, right? And we can take a look at the count. So um you know whoops i'm still in master so that's why it's blowing up so we execute this again and we can see it's a hundred thousand okay and we can select a top hundred from the patient and execute okay so we can see that there's you know some random names i made up okay what we want to do is we want to demonstrate how to use multiple databases and associate those multiple databases to uh, multiple work groups and pools, okay? So that means I wanna clone this database, okay? Um, since it's just example, we should be able to change the state of the database and do a, a you know, XP copy and uh, just make a copy of it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use master, okay? And again, this is not techniques I'd probably use in production, you know what I mean? Because um, I usually don't open up XP command. It's a security risk, but for just a demo, it's, it's more than fine. So I'm gonna set it to a single user and hopefully might not work because I got a bunch of other stuff going on. Let's see. 
and close all these. Okay. Put it here. Let's try this again. Might have worked. Might just have to hit refresh. So we can see that now it's a single usage, right? And then I'm gonna set it to offline. And if we hit refresh again, we can see it's offline. I'm gonna open up the XP uh, command shell, okay? And I'm gonna reconfigure it, okay? And um, this one is um, the one that actually does it, the one before, it's just giving me advanced ones. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run two copies. I'm gonna copy hospital1.mdf to hospital2, and same thing with the log file. So let's do that, hopefully this works. Uh, of course, I probably can't do this because I don't have writes, which I've ran into before. Easy way to do it is just hit copy, let's paste. Um, problem is, is that the user or the service that I'm using probably doesn't have writes this directory. So instead of futzing around with it, I'm just gonna manually do it. It's the same difference. Copy, if you're interested, and I had a lot of time to play around with this. I could just go ahead and make sure I had the right rights on this directory. And boom. So now I did what I wanted to, which is make a copy of it. And what we can do is we can bring uh, one online. We can set it to multi-user. And now we can hit refresh. So if you just want to make a local copy, that's a good technique, right? There's a couple of ways to attach it. We can attach it and tell it to rebuild the log. We can attach it and say, hey, guess what? You know what? We have both the data and log file. Let's do for attach. So I'm gonna do this. And now we should have two databases, right? We have a hospital too. And let's do a quick test of it. And we can click thousand rows and boom, or hundred, done. So you can look through this. Main thing is, is when I use XP uh, shell, I always want to set it off. I don't want to leave a security risk and I can just reconfigure. So now we have two different databases that I can do some playing with, okay? So let's bring up our third example. So our third example is we need to create some logons, right? So I want to use master, and I'm going to create a logon, okay, hospital one, hospital two. And then this, now again, this is not contained users. This is just old fashioned. You got logons and users, okay? So I'm gonna use master, okay? And if we go in master, we can go to, where is it? Management, security, logons. So we can see there's no logons yet, except for me, I'm a, I own this VM. There's one, I probably made a SQL admin at one time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop it and create it with a weak password, okay? This is the typical Microsoft password, password app, Zero one, of course, not something I would use in production. I'd probably use a password safe and get a big random uh, generated uh, one. So if we take a look at the logons, there's hospital one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another logon for hospital two. So we hit now refresh, we have hospital one, hospital two, but they haven't been associated with anything, right? So if we do this, it's just master. If we go, you know, user mapping, it's not mapped any databases yet, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use hospital one, okay? And we're gonna create user hospital one for the logon, and we're gonna grant control to active to hospital one, because we don't need to give it um, the actual staging. Let's execute, boom. And then we're gonna take the second database, and we're gonna do the same thing, but to the second user, okay? Execute. And so now, if we go ahead, we can connect to the database engine. And this time, what we're gonna do is change authentication to use these. So if I go here and type hospital two, and I always forget the password. What is the password for this? Uh, let me cancel, let me grab the password. Yeah, it's password two. Try this again. Back database engine. Here. 
hospital two and tab it and we can say remember it and boom so now i have a database right i didn't give it any rights to hospital one right so cool it's not accessible i gave it rights to hospital two and i don't see this uh staging i only gave it access to the patient info okay so we're doing some really good security and guess what it actually sees the first thousand routes so that's cool right and so if we go ahead and we bring up five, which was the one I was looking at, we can go back down to that query and see where it's going, right? And we know we haven't set anything up, right? So we're gonna see that, guess what? Hospital two is still using default, okay? So it has two connections to default, okay? So we can close this one and would have one, okay? So we're going to minimize this, okay? And if I remember right, close this one, and we're gonna to go to four. So example number four is where we start getting into actually having some fun, right? So we can actually say, hey, let's look for a sysexec and just pick the group ID, right? And we know group IDs too, right? And we can see, um, you know, if we look at work IDs, right? We'll know that there's a one and a two here, right? And one of them's probably, um, default and one's internal, okay? And I bet you 10 bucks that, you know, the group ID two is default. So we can also look at a bunch of things, like for instance, select star from resource governor configuration. Um, is not actually bringing anything because we're not in master. So let's do this again. And so the resource governor is supposed to be enabled. Let's see, it's still disabled. I thought I did enable it. Okay, let's do it. just enable it then. Enable. And this is the other way I said you can just do it from the actual GUI, SSMS. And we can go ahead and hit refresh. Okay, and then we go back to management. And we can see the resource governor now actually looks enabled before it had a little red thing next to it. And if we execute it, it's still not showing me any configuration there, but it's definitely enabled. And we can also look select star from the polls. Um, so it should be able, who am I logged in on this one? Oh, see, I'm logged in the wrong person. I'm logged in as two, so that's why it's not working. So let's go back here and now open it up. So in example four, let's do this again. Use master, great. And now this will probably work because I didn't have view uh, permissions server state. So possible two doesn't have that right. So it's one of the things you have to have. We can see that it is enabled. We can also look at the resource pool. So there's gonna be two, right? It's gonna be internal. Right, it's a one. Remember I told you for 10 bucks, defaults two, it's definitely two. And we can see, you know, what's being used, right? We can see the total uh, cache memory, compiled memory. Uh, there's a bunch of statistics on max memory we can see versus used memory and so on, mins. And here's all your counts, right? We can say, hey, the min memory percentage is zero, but can go up to 100. So maybe I only wanted, um, you know, the default to only go up to 20%, I could change that, okay? So those are the settings we can tweak going down the road. So work uh, groups, we didn't define any, so the only defaults are there, okay? And we can see that we have internal, and it goes to pool ID one, and we got default goes to pool ID two, so they match each other. We can also see if there's any, um, Pool volumes, okay, and there isn't, disk IO, and we can see NUMA affinity. So I usually don't play with these, so um, unless you know what you're doing, don't do it. Um, two things that are the external ones, right? So if you're doing R, these are the ones you wanna look at. So we can see that there's a default, but it's external pool ID. And at most you can do 100% CPU, but only 20% of the memory. And this is also the external affinity, which is uh, the NUMA group again. <clears throat> so now what we can do is we can actually select from here and see if there's any uh, metadata, right? So we can see right now that the 
UDF in the metadata hasn't been defined, okay? So there's no classifier. And we can also look at uh, the DM resource governor resource pools, okay, DMV, and we can get statistics on the pools, right? So we can see that the CPU uh, out of memory, memory weights default, so not really too much interesting stuff. And we can also get statistics on work groups, okay? So if we look at the work group, we got a similar query that we can look, okay? One of the things I like to do though is you can use performance monitor to do a lot of this, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and I think that was number four, so we're gonna open up number five. We're actually gonna define some things and we'll see what happens. So right now we haven't defined anything, so there's no classification function, um, there's no way to actually do this. So if we go back, let's go back to the steps. Sorry, George. Go back to here, we need to enable the resource governor, we did that. We need to create a resource pool, which we haven't done need a bunch of work groups. We need to create a classification function. We need to register it, and then we need to restart it for this to actually happen. So that is the, you know, the actual scripture that we need to follow, okay? So to do that, we first wanna do a create a resource group, and you can change these. So for instance, I can say on this hospital floor, I always want uh, a minimum 50% of the CPU to be donated. That's kind of high, right? So maybe, um, we could change that, right? Maybe I'll say, at most, I want always 20% of the CPU de dedicated to hospital one, maximum 100. Um, there's affinity schedule, I usually never play with it. You can also m play around with the min memory percentage, zero, and max memory percentage, 100%, okay? Also, we can give it IOPS, right? So zero to 1500, so that's where I set that. So we're gonna do the first one, we're gonna create the first pull, so execute. Now, if you go into the GUI and take a refresh, probably up here, we're gonna see now, guess what? We have a hospital pool, but there's no workload associated. So now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna associate a workload to it. So again, you can give it me, uh, the importance, medium, high, low, right? Um, there's some things you can set here, like the maximum memory grants. The max stop's the most interesting thing that I usually play around. How much parallelism do you wanna give it, okay? and that's your CPU. So you can tell, hey, you know, this one's a really small system, like I said. Um, if I remember right, it was only four virtual CPUs, so you can't really do much. But say if you had 24, right, you could do maybe max stop of eight. So that gives you three possible concurrent uh, queries run at the same time, okay? Because it goes into 24 three times. And so that might be a good uh, number for you, okay? And again, this is all trial and error. This is the art, okay? So if we hit refresh again, and then look here, we'll have a hospital group. So now we have a pool associated with a hospital group and we can go in here and uh, you can hit properties and we can see now that the hospital group's medium and that the memory, right, grants 50% and then we can say that, um, I think it's showing all of them, this is default. And this is the one that's here, so 50%, right? So we said that request memory grants 50%, and we also had 20 to 100, right? So we can go over here, hit properties again, and we can see there's no classifier, so it's not really active. We got the enabled, but you know, right now, if I log in and say do another one, um, say new query, right? So where am I going? new query, try it and go back here and go all the way down, we can see that this really still hasn't changed, right? We're still using the default, right? So we can see that I got an internal, which is one SA, I got a job that's running a SQL agent and then two windows, these two windows under here. Okay, so now what we can do now is go back and define the second group and then we're gonna create a classification function, okay? So this is pool one. This is pool two, so I'm gonna do something similar, but 500 for the IOPS, right? And then I can alter the resource group, okay? Now the classification function, it's gonna be very simple, right? We're gonna come in, and you always wanna define the classification function in master, and you want it to be really quick, okay? Uh, if you have any contention on this, like it's really uh, difficult, the problem is, is that it could cause issues, okay? So you just want, 
it's one of those things that um, it's like a logon trigger. It has to be very concise. Okay, so I have it saying dash users equal hospital one, then hospital one group. Otherwise, hospital two, it's hospital two group, else default. So this actually creates the classifying function. So if we execute this and we go to here and hit properties, we're gonna see it's not done. It hasn't, we see one, we can choose it, but it hasn't been instantiated yet, right? And so what we can do now is we can alter it and then reset the resource governor and we hit execute. Okay, and now if we hit the properties again, Okay, we can see now it's modified as a resource group. Now, if we go over here and we take a show logons, let's see if this changed. Really hasn't, we have John and it's it's the same because John doesn't go anything, he's default. So now what we can do is we can disconnect this guy and we can reconnect him. And I always forget the password. So I think that was, Number three, I think it was. Yeah, do this guy. So we'll do password one this time, so hospital one. So connect to database engine. Gonna change it over to SQL authentication. This time, I'm gonna use hospital zero one password, and I'm gonna connect. Uh, maybe I got the wrong password. Let's try S. P-I-T-A-L, let's do a one. Nope, maybe the password's wrong. Let's do this. Yeah, this should be right. Control C. Uh, Control V, connect. Let's try hospital too. I think the difference is password two, so. That should work though. Hospital, is it zero two or just two? That's what I'm doing wrong. Try this, there we go. Neil was doing something wrong, it's a little tired. It's late night here. So anyways, I'm logged in. So if we go ahead and back to that function that tells us how we're logged in, right? We can see which resource group or the actual work group it's assigned to, right? So if we execute it, now we can see hospital one is logged in as hospital one, okay? And if we go ahead and we connect again, okay, we change this to hospital two, and then I'm gonna change this one to hospital two, password two, we can see the second thing. Okay, so now we have hospital two and we can execute this and now we can see there's one guy that's in hospital two, one guy in one. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Let's do some performance monitors. We're gonna add a performance monitor. Okay, we wanna see how these guys are doing this. Is this actually happening, right? Is this doing the way we set it up? So SQL Server, Workgroup, Statistics. That's what I'm interested in. And so now what we can do is now we can pick hospital group one, okay? And we can do CPU usage, okay, and hit add. We can do hospital two, CPU usage, hit add. Try it. let's see what else we have. Okay, so maximum CPU time, queries reduced. And there was one other one I was looking for, but this is CPU, just hit okay. And so now we can see that we have two groups, right? We have hospital one, okay? And we can see, and then there's uh, hospital two, which is the green, and the green actually is not even doing anything. Hospital one has stuff going on, right? So now if we go to hospital two, say, try this one, and do a new query, and I'm gonna go back to five, and I'm gonna do something like check DB. Okay, so now hospital two, check DB. And what we're trying to do is see what the workload is. I'm gonna execute this. Oh, so I don't have access to do this. Okay, I thought it might be. Let's try doing this. No, I'm gonna do new query. 
paste it in and execute this okay so now if we take a look we didn't see anything here because there's no uh, usage but um let's try to do something a little off script here but just bear with me so go back to say hospital one new query and just select star from let's do cartesian product because we know that's going to take a long time right so Hospital one databases, um, and we can see it's hospital one, right? Tables, and we can just pull this guy. So cross product, cross drawing, the wrong paste in there. So let's go back to this. And what I'll do now is hello, control C. Oops, I didn't want to copy it. Let's try this again. Sorry about that, guys. So, Control C, Control V. Okay, execute. Uh, invalid, so it doesn't like it because I'm not in there. So, execute. Um, let's see. Okay, so let's do A and B. It's complaining about my query. So execute this, control, execute, okay. So that's still running. And now we can take a look at this and we can see, okay, that this, okay, the green one, which is workload two has nothing going on, but we can see that workload one, okay, is freaking out over here, it's going way over, right? And so we can see now that we haven't hit any thresholds, right? because we didn't set any thresholds for this, but we can definitely see that something's going on here, right? And we can take the same one, right? Because it's doing a Cartesian product there. We can do a Cartesian product here, hit new query, execute it. And we can go to hospital two and then execute this. And now we can see that this actually, this is spiking up to 100. We can see we actually having some stuff going on, okay? So we haven't shown that we've limited the resources for the actual CPU yet, but we can see that, um, you know, this one is actually um, doing different workloads, okay? And this one is having more CPU than the other one, okay? So that's the main uh, point of this exercise is to actually, how can we control this, right? We can see that these are the passwords, get rid of that. Uh, where's number five? So back to number five, right? So there's some things we can look at. This is all in the bundle. You can look at uh, the CPU. We can also look at the resource pool, right? So if we look for resource pool, there should be statistics on memory and disk, okay? So let's take a look at that. So we got this going on. It's still going on. We're gonna see if we can find the resource pool. So while I'm doing this uh, uh, work, I think this is a good time. Is there any questions there? Because um, the next one that we're gonna, expand on this we're going to talk about how do we do this for a large group of uh actual databases at this point in time no questions john okay cool so for the resource pool sats we can go to one and then uh, i was hoping that there was more than uh, am i seeing it down oh yeah 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 so we can bring them all over but no what we want to do now is we can actually in the resource pool we can do the average uh dis io so we can add this and we can do this one, average. And we also wanna do memory, right? So we can see max memory, uh, CPU, where else? Memory grants, memory pending grants, query. So I'm just gonna hit okay and let's see how this works. So now I'm probably gonna remove these. So we're gonna clear this one. Or can I just get rid of it? I think I just get rid of it this way, get rid of it this way. And now we should be able to see. Okay, so there's no really reading because it's all doing in memory right now. So um, let's kill these queries. Boom. I'll leave them up though. So we'll reuse them again. Boom. Okay, so the main thing is we talked about how, you know, this is how the classifier is, how it works into different groups. And the main three things you're going to be trying to control is CPU memory and disk IO, okay? Um, 
if you want to remove the functions, right, we can set it to null and we can actually stop uh, the classification, okay? So at this point, if we looked at it and we hit refresh and we went to properties, we'll see there's no classification now. So nothing's being classified. Um, there'll still be the pulls there that's not being classified. And so now if we go to query number five and go back up, we can see where the log did, right? So we can see that even though we stopped the classifier, once you connect it, it'll be holding that resource group until you get rid of it, okay? So two wasn't doing anything, so it's already gone, so I'm gonna disconnect it, okay? One's gone, I'm gonna hit disconnect, okay? If I connect back to one, okay, so I'm gonna do hospital one and grab the password again, so change this to a one, we can see now it's gonna revert back to default. So when you turn it off, you basically go back to normal, okay? So we're gonna go back to normal. The problem with this is, guess what? Now we have to create a uh, resource group and uh, there's probably this one here is probably one of these FIDs 62, so which one? This one, this one was still open. So uh, I can just control X this guy. Actually, let's kill him. I'll keep the other one open. And we can see once we get rid of this, boom, we're right back to where we were before. Everything in default. The problem with trying to control a bunch of databases with this is gonna be quite tedious, right? Because we're gonna have to set up a resource group for each one. And it's one of those things you really just don't wanna do. It's a lot of maintenance work, right? So the way around it is to actually use a table, okay? And so this is the last example and we're gonna wrap it up. So what we can do is I'm gonna remove everything and you can do that manually too. So we'll go through a manual exercise and do it. So disconnect, we'll show you how to do it manually. So we can see there's resource pools. So if we hit here, uh, we should be able to delete and hit okay. It's also gonna say, probably doesn't like it because underneath it, there is a workload. So delete the work group first and against the usual thing. So maybe I'm not in the right one. So let's go back to the code then. So example six, that's fine. Upload five. And basically we're gonna reset the sample uh, example and go ahead and do it uh, differently. And the way we're gonna do it is uh, we can drop this, right? So if it's there, we drop it. So now the function's gone. And then what we can do is we can delete the work group does not exist or you do not have permission. Who am I logged in as? Jmline, I should have permission. Okay, and then uh, that's one. And drop the pool, execute. This guy, execute. And execute. And hit refresh. And guess what, now we cleaned everything up. So now we're back to default and that. So you know what we want to do in this example is I want to show you how to go ahead and do the same thing we set up, but we're actually going to use a table to manage, you know, um, the actual um, assignments, right? So we're going to go ahead and create this table called DBMS name to work group. And what we can do is we can have the DBS name and a work group name. So we can say that, you know what? The database is hospital one, the work group's hospital one, hospital two, hospital two and we can show the data. And what we can do is we can do something like this. Uh, the group is default. If it's a sysadmin or any of the people that have admin, we're gonna put it into admin group, okay? Otherwise, uh, find the log on default database, right? And we can find that uh, for that one and then put them into the right work group. So the problem with this way is that we have to go ahead, okay? And make sure we set the default database. So um, you have to go back to security on these logons we created and make sure you set the actual default the way you want it. So I want the hospital one to always use hospital one, okay? And again, this would be typical to a application that signs in, right? They're always using their own database. So let's start creating this. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create the first hospital pool, okay, boom. Uh, it's not active, so that's why it's complaining. So we'll do example one, set it active. Try this again. Execute. They're active sections, records. Disconnect all sessions, so it doesn't like me. Let's do this. I'm gonna close out everything. There we go. Close this guy down. Do it again. 
<clears throat> so yeah, let's uh, recap and I'll get that last example uh, done for you. So resource pools, work groups we talked about, the classification function. So the main thing is make sure that the it's a user-defined function and make sure it's written well, otherwise you can have log on users, okay? And it must exist in the master database, okay? And uh, any unclassified should default to the default work group, okay? And, you know, there's a lot of things you can use in it. You can do a lookup table, okay? And um, I would suggest using read uncommitted isolation, okay? Or you can do RCSI if you have it set up, but no lock hint's fine, right? Because it's just master and you're just looking for a quick property. It's not going to change. And um, basically, this is used, the resource driven is used to, again, monitor and tune the resource for application. So when you have a person that's logging on a uh, session ID and a log ID, they get mapped to the right work group that maps to the right pool that gets the right resources, okay? That's the whole point of the resource group or resource governor. And so we're connected again, and in this one, we can do what we're doing. So we're gonna go back to example six, and I'm gonna show you how to use a um, table to do the same thing, but it uh, allows you more flexibility because if you had, okay, a hundred different um, databases, this would be quite complex to actually add rules for each one. So if we go to management and we go to resource governor, we can see it's enabled. And if we um, hit refresh, what does it say? Pending reconfigure. So let's reconfigure this then. Execute. And then refresh. And we can see there's a resource pool, hospital pool one, right? And we can give it a work group one. We can update it. So let's do this. And we're going to do a hospital pool two. So it's this guy all the way down. I'm going to bring this a little farther down so you can see it. So execute. And then work group two. We're going to execute this. Last thing is we're going to have the admin group, right? We talked about. So, and again, I'm just putting some default values in, nothing that really makes sense. But when you do this, you have to think about how much you want to allocate when it comes to memory, comes to disk, comes to IOPS, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to create this reference table, right? And we're going to put some values in. So we're going to put these. And so we can execute this and we can see there's two values. So this logon maps to this work group and so on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to redefine this classification function. Okay. And so now what's interesting now is that we have three of them, right? So if I go ahead and I create a new connection, I'm SA, right? So if I go up to, say, example five and go back to the little query that shows logons, you should see I'm an admin pool now, right? So, well, for some reason, I'm still going to default. Uh, maybe because I'm not part of the group, it's looking for the actual name. Uh, I don't know why I wouldn't be in one of those. I'm sys admin for sure, but I would definitely check a look at this group. But the main thing is, let's see if the other ones work. So if we connect to, and again, do a little debugging on this. Um, might be because I did Windows authentication versus SQL. But um, if we go to this guy, grab password, paste them in, hit connect. We can actually see now that I'm connected, right? And if we run this guy again, which is the show logons, we can see now I'm still going to default. So I guess the question is, there's something going on. So let's hit refresh. And let's make sure I did this correctly. Oh, look, it's reconfigure pending. So it did not reconfigure it. So that might be the issue. Let's see. Execute. Okay, so let's disconnect this guy and connect him again. Just make sure you're not in that, you know, configuration or reconfigure pending because at that point it didn't take place. And so see, now it's working the way I want. So I got some windows that are open, this guy probably. And then let's see if the one I thought was gonna work is gonna work. So if I go back to 
uh, regular authentication and then go back to here and hit execute and now we can see the admin group coming up okay and the last one last test and again you always want to test these is we're going to go into i'm about to run out of time so we'll ask query and i'm going to wrap up so and then we can take questions so at this point password two and again do i get the right resource group because you know now i have three users should be three different resource groups, pools, and workloads. So we got three different workloads. And uh, nope, for some reason the admin went away. So I, I'm going to have to look into that. But anyways, um, I said to my time. So I'm going to wrap up on the last slide. So here's a bunch of references. Um, enterprise fees only. There's limits. There's governor uh, DMVs. Example use, logon property, connection property, these are all different things you can do. Improve classification functions, there's a little uh, blog that someone else did. And uh, thank you for spending an hour with me. I hope you learned something. And uh, thanks again, Mark, for having me. Is there any questions? No problems. Thank you very much, John. Um, we just had a little bit of a delay. Can you just go back while we're talking and, and opening up the questions? Can you just go back to that uh, resource page so that uh, that stays up a little bit longer for people? There we go. Okay. So um, we do have uh, a question for you. So with um, is there a way that you can configure Resource Governor with Azure SQL Database? No, but it was a good question. And let me show you where you can go. Most of the stuff I research myself and MSDN is the great place to do it, right? So uh, you can just type Microsoft. And I'm gonna, I already know the answer to this. But if you look at Resource Governor, okay, it's gonna work uh, with all versions of SQL Server. And it's gonna work with Azure Managed Instance because Azure Managed Instance is the most compatible version of SQL they have in a cloud. So you can definitely set it for Azure Managed Instance. Um, in uh, Azure SQL Data Warehouse, they have something called classes or resource classes and it's similar to this. And so you can sign uh, a query when you run it to a resource class okay but it, it doesn't give you such fine tuning as resource governor okay um so where you mentioned just before that this works in uh, all versions what about um uh is there any limitations from a um addition um it used to be only a resource uh used to be only enterprise version that they're doing it the question i'm wondering is is that still uh a question um how about i do this work i let's take a really quick uh look and if i can't find it then we'll go from there so sql server uh features by addition i think it is right and so additions and supported features, this should be good enough. This is 2017, so it's one version back, but the question is, resource. Resource governor. Okay, so which one? So it used to be enterprise only, and what they have is, yes, it's still an enterprise only feature on 2017. Let's go back to 19. Let's see if that's still the issue. Um, let's try doing a search again. And they don't have it. Uh, I would say you're gonna have to do, I'll try one more link and then we'll call it a day on this question, but I'm thinking that you have to have the enterprise and that's one of the differentiators. Okay, not a problem. Definitely, so, so I would definitely think that's the, the answer. And that's why I had it on the slide as enterprise feature only. Very good. Well, thank you very much, John, for your time today, taking us all through Resource Governor and how you can control uh, those resource utilizations in your environment. Um, thank you, everybody, for being a part of uh, this session. 
uh, make sure that you, if you haven't registered already, register for the next session in two weeks time where we'll be talking about cloud infrastructure as a code. So with that, I'd like to once again, thank everybody for being on this call. Stay thank safe. You everyone. Stay safe. Have a good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you happen to be. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Have a nice day.